Hey, g'day, it's Brezzo. Thanks for stopping by. Now this is episode three of building a four facet drill grinder, but I'm going to start today's video with something completely different. And in the last episode, episode two, I put out a call and I asked if anybody had a plug like this one. Now this fits my Bridgeport milling machine and I needed one of these plugs so I could set up a shaper head for the Bridgeport. And this allows me to either plug in the shaper head or the milling spindle and I can just swap over from one to the other. Now I asked if anybody had one and uh, lots and lots of people responded. I had a lot of people give me a link to a company in New Zealand that sells these LPA plugs. That was my fallback plan. I was going to buy a brand new one if I couldn't get one of these. Now another viewer named David King got in touch with me. He lives in New South Wales and he had this one. Now this is identical apart from the clocking of the earth pin. So on the one that he sent me, the earth pin was 90 degrees to where it is now. And all I had to do to make it work was to re-drill the hole. So that's the original hole that held the, uh, the inside, insides of the plug together. And I just had to drill a new hole at 90 degrees. And otherwise it's exactly the same. So uh, go figure, <laughs> why would a manufacturer just arbitrarily clock that at 90 degrees? But anyway, it's, uh, it works, I've plugged it into the machine, I've got some new cables, it's a three phase cable, and I haven't yet hooked it up to the shaper head, but I'm absolutely confident it's going to work. So thank you very much David, I really appreciate it, he sent it to me free of charge, didn't ask for any payment, even though I offered, so uh, yeah, that's wonderful. And I did actually have another viewer who lives in Tasmania with the correct plug, exactly the same as the one that I have. I even had the stainless steel braid on the outside, but I'd already said yes to David's offer and uh, I followed through on that. So, got one and uh, you're going to see this working later on in another video. Now the first part we're going to make on this today is this flat part here. This is the trunnion plate. But before I do that, I just want to talk about this 3D printed mock-up that I've made. Now I made this as a way of verifying the CAD model that I'd already done. And it also allowed me to take parts off this and actually check them against parts I'd already fixtured in the milling machine and the lathe, just to check for orientation and also the overall size of each part. But as I went along, I started to wonder whether you can actually make a working version of this tool using 3D printed parts. Now obviously you wouldn't use MDF for these two flat sheet parts, you could make those out of some sort of flat sheet uh, metal. And it turns out somebody's already beaten me to it, now his name is Alan Wood, goes by the name of Woody. He has a really good blog and I'll put the, the link to that blog in the description below. Now he's very kindly made his version of this tool available as 3D files. Now he's put one folder up there as a fusion model and the other folder has uh, a one of those universal CAD formats that you can import into most CAD programs. And that would allow you to turn these parts into STLs and then print them on whatever 3D printer that you have. Now for the flat sheet parts here, if you have uh, access to one of those laser cutting services like Send Cut Send, you'd be able to send them the CAD files. They could return these parts to you as laser cut metal parts. So either brass or steel or aluminium, whatever you want. And those laser cut parts don't need any post finishing. The holes are already the correct size. You just assemble the parts. Now, Alan uh, has made a version of this tool and it's a working version. And he's done a few clever things to make it stronger, like putting a sleeve in this part here and putting bearings in these trunnion plates or trunnion risers, whatever you like to call them. And uh, here's a screenshot of his blog. And there's lots of other useful resources on that blog as well. And here's the Fusion model. And you can see, or well, you may be able to see some differences between what I'm doing in metal and what he's done in 3D printed plastic. And uh, uh, it, in my view, anyway, this is a wonderful alternative for anybody who doesn't own a milling machine or doesn't have a fully equipped workshop and uh, it sort of makes it accessible for all those people. So thank you very much Alan, thanks for sharing those files and uh, check out his blog, like I say it's got other really useful tools and information on there as well. Okay, let's go on get this part done. 
We're going to start with this part here today. This is a piece of 3mm thick hot roll steel plate. It's square and it's sitting on a pair of sacrificial parallels against the vice jaws. There's an adjustable parallel underneath this section here and this is just so that when we drill holes in this it's not going to deflect downwards. Now this is a laser cut mock-up of the same part and you can see that there's a whole lot of holes that need to be drilled in that. There's also a cutout section here which clears the grinding wheel. Now this group of holes here allow you to position the collet block which holds the drill bits and you can swing that through three different angles and the whole trunnion plate can pivot like that to give you the primary and secondary relief on the grind of the drill. Now Instead of sort of finding these hole positions sort of bit by bit, what I've done is I've used touch DRO to locate all of the holes on this side of the plate. So I'm going to do all of those first and then I'll touch off against this side of the plate and then I'll group all of these holes here. Now I could possibly do them all together, it's just the way I dimensioned the drawing. And what I've done is I've put my vice stop on here as well, just in case I need to take this part out. So I'll show you what I've done in touch DRO and then we'll go ahead and we'll spot drill all the positions and then we can come back and open them up to whatever size they need to be. So here's my touch DRO screen. You can see that X and Y are currently set at zero. So what I did was I used my edge finder to locate the back left hand corner of that steel plate and I drove the spindle over that exact corner and zeroed X and Y at that position. But I also used this button down here, this plus sign. And when you tap that, it will add that point to a list on the right hand side of the screen. Now the positions shown on the list here are in absolute units or absolute dimensions, but over here in this screen they're actually shown in incremental. So what I did then, once I've got 0, zero position on that list, I can go across to each hole position one after the other, not drilling them, I'm just locating the positions, and then I can add those points to that list there. So as you go along, there's my first hole that I'll need to drill. So I'll just move X until it reads zero over here and move Y until that reads zero and then I'll spot drill that position. And you just do that as you move through the list. And if you get lost, you can always go back to point one. That's gonna be your absolute origin and you can go from there. So you can see I've got my spot drill set up here and I'm right on that back left hand corner at zero zero. So I'll use the first point in my list and we'll drill the first hole and that is going to be this hole here, a fixing hole for the, the little pillar that sits on that corner of the plate. So there's all five of the holes. Now these uh, two holes at the back corner of the vise and these two at the front are going to be four millimeter clearance holes for M4 screws. This one here is a 12 millimeter diameter and it's just a corner radius for a cutout. So I'm just going to use a 12 millimeter twist drill for that. It's, it's accurate enough for what we need to do. So let's get these done and then we can swap over and do the ones on the other side. Now the good thing is I can drill this one and then I just go backwards through the list uh, to do all of the remaining holes. I can drive back to the exact centers over each one of those positions.
So there's all five holes on the left hand side of that plate. Now I'm going to edge fire it against the right hand side and I can set out for the remaining three holes. Now there's actually six, but the three that locate the collet block and tilt it through its various included angles, I'll be doing those with a drill jig. I've just zeroed the back right hand corner of our steel plate here and I've set X and Y to zero and I've also created a new workspace. So here on the right hand side of our screen you see it says right side trunnion. Now you can actually have an almost unlimited number of workspaces and uh, you don't have to delete the original workspace. In fact if I come up here you see under workspaces it actually still has the original default workspace set there. And here are all my points still set so if I do need to go back and find those hole positions again, I just switch back to the default workspace. You can rename that if you want to. You can also delete workspaces up here, but the one I want today or now is right side trunnion. All right, so there we are at zero, zero. Now what I'll do now is find the three holes that I need to drill and I'll set points for those. So that's Y for the first one, 43.82, and we're 40.81 in X. Okay, so that's our first hole position, and what we can do now is set a point. Okay, now we can offset to find the other two, but I'll bring you back when I've done that. So here in my workspace now I've got three holes, they're points two, three, four. Point one is the origin, that's the back right hand corner. And I'm set on point four at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and spot drill the three holes and then I'll go back. Uh, some of them are countersunk for M4 and one of them is going to be reamed for a three millimeter dowel pin. Well, there's all three holes drilled now. I'm going to take this out of the vise. I'll scribe in the marks, which will be the edges of the cutout, which clears the grinding wheel. I'm just going to bandsaw that and finish it with a file. It's not all that critical. But what is critical is the three holes which determine the angle of the collet block. So I've only drilled one of them, and that's the common hole that this pin fits into. And then the idea is that you should be able to rotate the collet block through three different angles to give you three different included angles on the drill point. Now those holes have to be exactly the same as the center to center distance here. So I'm going to make a drill jig. I'll fix uh, one pin into this hole here and then I can move the drill jig around from one angle to the next and drill the three appropriate holes. It's really important that these pins slide into all of the holes without any binding or shake. So I've got to get that right. I can try it out in a bit of scrap first and make sure it's good before I commit to doing it here. I've got a piece of cold rolled steel stock in the vise here. Now this is going to be the drill jig and this is going to allow me to drill the trunnion plate to match up with these two dowels here. 
Now, some people might say, why don't you just take that aluminium plate off, undo those two screws, and use that as your drill jig. Well, this is aluminium, and my experience has shown <laughs> that um, if you try to use this as your drill jig, the drill bit will almost certainly wander, and you'll end up with oversized holes in this part later. Also, these have already been reamed. So if I try to put the drill size through that will allow me to ream the other plate, it won't fit accurately. Anyway, you see what I mean. So I'm going to spot drill here and the only important feature here is that the holes are 38.1 or an inch and a half apart. So you may have noticed there, I only ream that hole. That's going to be the fixed dowel pin that pivots around the hole that's already in the trunnion plate. This one has been drilled number 33, which is just under size for a three millimeter reamer. So there's the finished drill jig, and this dowel pin is just a sort of a sliding fit in that end hole there. This hole here is drilled number 33, so it's just under size for the three millimeter reamer. Now I tried it out in a bit of scrap, and I tried that bit of scrap on our collet block, and everything slides together, sort of goes on nicely. It doesn't sort of rattle or move around at all, and it doesn't bind, so quite happy with that. So what we can do now is we can put our drill jig into this hole here, or at least put the dowel pin in there, and then we need to set our first angle. So it's 67 and a half degrees. So I've got this little more and right uh, engineer's bevel here, and this is set to the correct angle. So we can just put that in against the end of the trunnion plate, set our drill jig up and then clamp that in place and drill the hole. Now it's a bit awkward to set up, uh, so I'm going to do it off camera, but I'll bring you back when we're ready to drill the hole. Well, um, <laughs> this looks unnecessarily complex, but it'll work. So what I've done is I've clamped the drill jig to the trunnion plate with this little machinist clamp, and I've set the angle in there before I did that. And I've got a one, two, three block sitting on the drilling machine table and a scrap of aluminium on top of that so I don't drill into the one, two, three block. Now the drill bit slides down into our drill jig and I've clamped everything to the table of the drilling machine and I've locked everything. So I'll go ahead and drill this first one and then we just need to move the drill jig around through the other two angles to do the same. Sorry about that handle, <laughs> but that's gone through. I felt it going to the aluminium. So I'll drill all three holes and then I'll ream them afterwards. I've got one of these eye gauging digital protractors or angle gauges or bevels, whatever you like to call it. But this is uh, a bit cumbersome to use on this little job here. It's sort of, it's awkward. So that's why I'm using the little more and right uh, bevel. And I can put that in place and set that and then transfer that angle to my job. So I've done that, I've got that in place, I've got it clamped, so I'll go ahead and drill the second hole, 59 degrees.
that rattling noise you can hear when the drill slows down is the pull gear in the drivetrain of my drilling machine. Uh, it's one that Mr. Pete showed a long time ago. I did a, a build uh, series on that. But it's got planetary gears in it and because I've got a VFD on this drill press it breaks electrically and it causes the, the whole pull gear assembly to sort of just um, overrun a bit and that's what that rattling noise is. So don't worry, it's perfectly normal. Well, you didn't hear it that time, did you? <laughs> so I just slowed the spindle down by hand. Okay, that's all three holes now, so we're just going to ream them and I'll lightly countersink those and we're done. Alright, uh, that wobbly old reamer seems to straighten out when it gets into the hole, so let's clean that up now and we'll check it and make sure it's good. Well, straight off the drill press, these holes are a little bit too tight. Uh, I can put them in there, each individual dowel pin will go into its hole, but to get it in there you've got to sort of wriggle it in and you've got to wriggle it out again. And uh, you probably want it so it's sort of a nice easy sliding fit, but you don't want it to sort of slop around at all. And when you're using this drill grinder, you do need to remove this collet block to inspect the tip of the drill. And that was one of the things I liked about this style of drill grinder. If you're using a decal clone and you've got the drill bit in a collet in the workhead, once it's in there, uh, you can't easily take it out and check it. Uh, if you remove from the collet and try and put it back, the geometry is all changed. With this, you can just remove that whole assembly. There you go and you can have a really good look at the tip of the drill, you can see what you're doing, adjust it if you need to, put it back on the trunnion and everything about the trunnion and the, the wheel head and everything else is the same, you haven't changed anything. So yeah, I, I'll work on that, I can get it better than that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to do this, uh, this cutout in the back here. So I'm just going to set this out uh, by scribing lines, so I've got my little uh, scribing tool here and I've set that to the correct dimension according to the drawing and I can scribe that line on there and I'll square a line in from this side with the engineer square and a scriber and we'll just cut that out and file it to shape and then that part is done So I'm ready to bandsaw out that corner now. So I also witness mark along those scribe lines there. So when I file back to the marks, I'll know that I split the witness marks and ended up with the correct dimension. Now, while you weren't looking, I went ahead and I did the carriage plate as well. So same thickness stock, it just needed a pattern of holes drilled in that. So I did it exactly the same way as the trunnion plate. So I located all my centers in touch DRO spot drilled all of those centers and then went back with the appropriate size drill bit and opened them up. So this also needs cut out here to clear the grinding wheel so let's go ahead and do that now. One of the things you're going to need if you're going to file to a line like this is really, really good light. Uh, back in the old days when my eyesight was a lot better, it didn't seem to bother me as much. But now I, you really have to turn my head down low and look at it from the side. I've actually got an LED light here on the vise, which uh, does help a bit. 
but you still got to check it regularly and just watch as you approach the line and when you're filing into an internal corner like this with a radius you really want to work your file away from that corner so on a bit of an angle like that and what I usually do is just leave a little tiny sort of uh, ridge of material to protect that corner and then I'll go back later on and clean that out So there's a little tiny ridge there. I can see I've just split the witness mark on this end here and I might have gone a bit too far at the other end there. We'll just clean up now with a hand smooth file. I'm very very close there like I say probably went a bit too far up here but uh, I'll leave that little corner there and I'll clean that up once I've got this long edge done Well, that's about 95% done. I need to get in here and sort of blend that with some emery cloth just to you know, make those file marks disappear. And I sort of lost it here. I overcut that corner, but there's going to be a fairly generous radius on that corner anyway. Now these two corners, this one, this one have to stay at 90 degrees because we're going to bolt some blocks to these two points. I'll show you on the mock-up. So there's the mock-up. When I first saw this, I thought, gee, that's a lot of work. Why wouldn't you just have these at 90 degrees to the surface of that plate? But it's to do with the way we have to provide clearance for the cup wheel on the grinder. And these holes, uh, let's see if I can line that up. Oop, there it is. Those holes have to line up precisely. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge to do. I'm going to do this on the milling machine and on the rotary table. So uh, that's next. Let's go and do that. Well, this is the part we need to make the, uh, the 3D printed mock-up here and I've got to do two of them. So I've got one set up in the vise now. I've got my vise stop set up so I can swap the parts out easily and I've already centered the drill bit over the position of that bore there. And when I first looked at this part I was tempted to try to machine the 20 degree angle first and then offset the hole from that. But that would have mean, uh, meant that you have to offset not only the hole but you then also need to find that end location there. So I'm going to do it back to front. I'm actually going to drill and ream the hole first. And then on my CAD drawing, I know exactly how far to offset to get to this 20 degree angle. And I can set the angle in the rotary table. Anyway, we'll go ahead and do this one and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, and by the way, one of the good things about having a mock-up <laughs> is that you can put it on top of the part and you can verify that you're not about to do something stupid. It's sort of like having a full-size, three-dimensional drawing of your part that you can move around. It's, it's brilliant. Right, that's the first one done. I'm just going to swap the parts out and do the second one, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, now don't laugh. I know this looks unnecessarily complex, but it's what I came up with to do this job. And these two parts have to be as identical as possible. And that's so the gantry plate will pivot the way it's meant to. And these parts need to be flipped relative to one another and they're offset either side of the gantry plate. So on both parts, this hole has to be absolutely collinear. So what I've done here is I've got this little grinding vise set up on the rotary table. I've got a six millimeter pin in the spindle and I can drop that into that hole there. And I've checked the orientation of the vise. Now it's parallel to the x-axis of the milling machine. 
and I'm just using a, an engineer square off this angle plate at the end here which I've swept so I'm fairly confident that's okay and uh, I've got this sitting on parallels but I'm going to have to remove these parallels so I can put this little uh, vice stop in place so I can swap the parts out and do the other one. So what I can do now is I can index the rotary tape around through 20 degrees and then offset the distance shown in my drawing. Now I'll show you the CAD drawing and I'll show you one of the good things about doing CAD drawings. So here's my CAD drawing and this is the dimension that I need, this 25.44. So that's offset perpendicular to this 20 degree angle or 70 degree face. And uh, once I've rotated the rotary table around, I can offset that distance and that will place me right along that line there. I'll need to offset the, the radius of the cutter as well. So let's do that first. All right, so um, I'm just gonna I've got a scribe line on here, so I know I'm doing it right. Okay. So that should be my 20 degrees. I'll lock the table there. Okay, now on my DRO, I've got everything zeroed out. So I can just offset the 25.44 plus 4 millimeters for the radius of the cutter. Okay, that should be it there. So I'll get my cutter set up and we'll just check it against that scribe line. All right, there's a close-up view, a better view of that. And here's my mock-up part. I can place that up against the cutter and I can feel that butting into the side of the cutter there. And if I move the table in X now, that tracks along that scribe line there. So I just have to be a bit careful when I get to this end, make sure I don't run into the vise. I have to drill a pair of M4 holes in this angular surface here. So I'm just going to set this up using the old finger micrometer. So I've got a parallel on the fixture of the vise there. And I'm just going to drop that down. And your fingertips are very, very good at working out comparative heights. So you just drag your finger across that interface there and you'll feel if there's any difference in height. Not that this needs to be terribly precise. Okay, I'm going to edge find against this sharp corner here. I've already uh, found the center of the y-axis and then we'll just drill and tap for M4.
Okay, I'll get the other one of those done and then we'll assemble the gantry plate to this point. I think we need to finish up this episode today. Now, what I've done is I've shortened the dowel pins on the bottom of this plate here so that when we push it through the holes in the trunnion plate, we don't need to push it quite so far. So it just sort of snugs down like that and it means that you can remove it fairly easily and check it, put it back if you need to. Now, the other thing I did was I've assembled these little uprights here. And I know that looks weird the way it is, but it's essential for the operation of the machine. And remember I said it was really important those holes line up. Now this is a piece of cold rolled 6mm steel, certainly not precision ground, but I can put that through that first hole and slide it into the second hole. And when I rotate it, it does go around. It sort of catches in a couple of places, which makes me think that this isn't dead straight. But I was actually surprised that it went through and didn't need any reworking. So all I did was I tightened one set of screws on this side, put the rod through and then I tightened the other set of screws and it just sort of self-aligned. So that's all good. Uh, now the other thing that we can see going on here now is if I put the trunnion, uh, put the collet box sorry, on the trunnion plate and then I slide that steel rod through what you should see is the tip of the drill lining up with the axis of that steel rod. Now that's absolutely essential for the accuracy of this machine. So that when you tilt the trunnion plate, the axis of the drill bit doesn't move relative to the face of the grinding wheel. So uh, when I designed this in CAD, or at least when I copied the original drawings I was given, I had to play with the height of these parts to ensure that that happened. But that's you know, seems to be lining up quite well. Now the other thing I did was I made this part here. Now it's just a bracket and it's got a bunch of uh, tapped, drilled and tapped holes in it, a couple of fastener holes at the top there. And this needs to sit over at an angle of 75 degrees. So I didn't video all of this because it's just basic milling, drilling and tapping. The only thing that was uh, a bit critical was getting that 75 degree angle. So I used an angle block in the vise to lay that part over at the correct angle. I milled off the top surface and then I was able to put it in the vise horizontally and edge find from that sharp edge and bring it back to its correct length. Once I had that, the rest of it was just, like I say, just drilling and tapping. And that little part there carries two function. So the first one is this cam. Now this gives you some change or some uh, control over the angle of the primary relief, I think, yeah. Primary relief? I'm going to have to check that. I always get this wrong. <laughs> anyway, that gives you some control over one of the angles. And this little gadget here, this little flipper, that gives you the setting for the other angle. So when this is sitting on the carriage plate, you can either use the eccentric or the little flip plate there to set the two angles. Now that carriage plate is finished, uh, it just needs to have all the hardware fitted to it but we'll do that later. Okay so uh, I think that's the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, catch up with me next time. Uh, we'll probably get most of the parts done and we can sort of look at the assembly. But yeah that's coming up so uh, thanks for watching today. And I'll see you next time. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's all these bugs getting around. These are actually winged termites. So when the, uh, the nest needs to split into another colony, uh, all the termites grow wings, they fly away, and they'll infect a tree stump or a house. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's how they set up their new colony. But yeah, that's your wildlife shot for today. Okay, it's Brezzo. See you next time. Cheers.